Hello everybody, I'm so excited today to bring you into our medical area and have a discussion with Carol. We're going to talk about our breeding program and how we choose the puppies that are going into our breeding program. Because Carol, it's quite a process and we it, were just talking about that. Here. It, it is and what's really cool and a lot of people don't realize is it's actually for every single puppy, it's mm -hmm. a multi-year process. Right. And so when we're choosing puppies to keep for a program, it's driven by our clients. So when our clients say, hey, here's what I want, here's what I'm looking for, this would be my perfect dog, it's either something we're currently able to make. Right. Or it may be something we're not currently able to make, which means we need to breed to get there. Well, now, there are particular litters, certain litters that we actually breed because it's what we need for our program. So we're not breeding it for you guys necessarily. We're breeding it because ultimately it will be for our clients. Like this beautiful litter that we're going to discuss today that you're going to see Charles, our training supervisor, working with. Uh, can you introduce these beautiful puppies to our clients mm -hmm. and then let them, we're going to tell them what's going on here. So this is uh, two of the, our Viola boys. It's Viola Green and Viola Orange. And basically the Viola litter was bred because for our program we need truly big larges with wonderful loose wavy coats that are allergy friendly as low shedding as possible. And we need some rare and unique mm -hmm. colors. We have a call for party, right. we have a call for chocolate, mm -hmm. we have a call for Merle. So this litter was bred specifically with, so these are the two boys okay. we're talking about. This is the parents. So this is Viola and Viola was born here. She is from one of our poodles named Jenny and our golden retriever Dobby Day yeah. are her parents. So we know her history, we know her genetics and Rembrandt. Rembrandt is our beautiful Merle poodle. So combining those genetics, we're going to get that wonderful coat that we need. We know that historically with Viola, we know we're going to get that size that we need. And we have the potential of all the really cool colors that everyone is looking so for. So we did get it. So pull the litter. So we up. did. And so, well, the litter group, I have these two boys, but we got out of the litter quite a few puppies. We also kept two girls that yeah. we're going to be watching. Yeah. Um, and a couple of puppies were made available, but only after we got the litter, we saw what was there. But these two boys were trying to actively choose between because we don't need two boys for the program. We right. only need one. And that's what we want to share with y'all today. A lot of times you'll ask the question, well, how did this adult or bigger 16, 20 week old dog end up on your website? And is it trained? And what's been going on with it? Well, we're going to kind of give you some behind the scenes. So what's been going on? We knew we bred the litter. We actually have a document up that says do not offer. So if you actually got a puppy in this litter, it was because we narrowed it down to what we were looking for and we knew, okay, we already have this, so we can offer this particular one or two puppies. The other puppies we kept, we did DNA genetics on them and we enrolled them immediately when they were able to go to Doodle Prep School. Mm -hmm. On into Doodle Prep School with Charles, so take a look at them. You can see right now these boys are being trained with Charles. He's been working with them. Nope. They've been here, Charles, for many weeks with you. Um, five weeks. Five weeks. How are they doing? Doing great. Well, and to enter our breeding program, there's so many boxes that they have to check. Yeah. It's not just about the look and what the clients are looking for. It's also about producing a healthy dog, appropriate temperament. We have a goal and a mission. We want dogs that are great companions, potential to be service dogs. And so part of that evaluation is how trainable are these puppies? If these boys had entered prep school, no matter what their health screening said, and were not trainable, were unruly, were difficult to work with, overly mouthy, we would have eliminated them from the program. But the temperament rules here, and that's important. So now we've pretty much realized we love both of the boys. I mean, take a look at them. Charles, hold each one of them up. I'll hold them. I'll hold them, them and <laughs> let them see the puppies, how absolutely fabulous they are. So the puppies are phenomenal. There's not a thing that I don't love about either one. One, they're both, look at the Merle, look at the chocolate coloration. Now, of course, this sweet boy is absolutely beautiful with this coloration and it's got more rare than I've seen in a long time. Absolutely. But this is also rare and look at the eyes. So ideally, in a perfect world, we would have gotten a chocolate Merle party. Yeah. We did it. No. We got a solid chocolate Merle and then 
a Merle party. So that means that we won't keep both boys, but we don't know which boy we're going to keep until their DNA, you know, test, their genetic tests come back. And we're going to go over that with y'all because if you were picking today, half of you would want one and half would want the other. Just know that in this litter, there will be available puppies, but they're going to be older, but they will come with prep school because we're not just going to let them sit around and turn into little hoodlums. we got to train them. They've got to come underneath the, our dual prep school program, and Charles says that they're doing an incredible job. Well, I mean, look, these are four-month-old puppies, and look at how great they're sitting here, behaving, being handled, and cuddled. Yeah, they're very outgoing, very confident. This one has a little bit more of a silly side, um, kind of more of a goofball. This one is more focused and intent on the training, where this one is a little bit more silly, but both of them are fabulous. So, um, Kira, we got to talk about now what's going to happen and what's going to determine. So we'll let them get down with Charles and hang out with their trainer, and we want to walk you through just a little bit of the testing and the process, what's going to happen to determine which boy's ours. I don't know yet. Yeah, we don't know, and we won't know for another couple weeks. Okay. And so the DNA tests have been sent back. It usually takes a few weeks to get all the results back. Now, as it happens, we have the results on one boy, but not the other. But the other thing that's got to happen is they've got to have their health screenings for hips, eyes, elbows and heart. We check all of those things out and so they'll go at 17 weeks. They're 15 weeks old now. So in two weeks they'll go to the vet to get their health screenings and both of them should pass with flying colors. We know the genetic history. These dogs are great but we're very particular. We're only going to take the top tier of those health screenings to make sure that we're breeding for the best possible genetic outcome. And if we only want one or for our program, we're going to take the one that's just, I mean, just has the highest score. They might be both in the good to excellent range. We're going to take one. If one's almost just a little higher, mm -hmm. we're not going to look at color at that point. We're going to look at their test scores and how they come back. But we don't just look at that. We also look at some other markers that we want to talk to you about. So ideally, like I said, we would have had a boy that was chocolate Merle party. If we could have put in our, year, our order to yes. the mom and she delivered exactly what so we wanted. That but health screenings both being equal, what we're going to look for is a puppy that on DNA, and I'm going to pull, oh, I have it on a different screen, sorry, okay, that on DNA, and this is the DNA of green, this is the chocolate Merle's DNA, so what we can see is this is where we talk about chocolate. Now, we already knew that this is what we were going to get, these two lowercase v's, because the two lowercase v's mean he's chocolate. Now, the other one, what I'm hoping to see is a capital B because he's not chocolate. So that means if it's there, it's going to be recessive and then a lowercase b saying it's recessive. For this guy, what I wanted to see was right here is where it talks about party. The two capital S's means he doesn't carry for party. He doesn't have any of that in his history. He's not going to be able to produce a party puppy. Ideally, I would have seen this capital S and then a lowercase s and a P. Now on the other puppy, when his DNA comes back, it's gonna have two lowercase SPs. Because we know he's party. Because we can see that he's party. Now this could be two capital Bs or a capital B and a lowercase B. Now, all things equal. If his come back and it shows party, which we know, but both capital Bs, that means we literally are gonna have to pick, do we want the chocolate or do we want party? Mm -hmm. And then we look at the health screenings to decide. Then we're going to look at the hips. Then we're going to look at the elbows. We're going to look at the eyes, the heart, everything else. But this is so awesome. You know, mm -hmm. so kind of, I know they're wanting to know, what is this? Just kind of give us a rundown on what we're, what we're looking sure. at. Sure. So this top one talks about what type of mask or what type of face the puppy can have. So sometimes you'll see puppy with like a black muzzle and then coloring beyond that. So that's what this talks about, is whether or not they have a melanized mask. This also is gonna talk about whether or not they can express dark color in their coat. So if I have two lowercase e's, the dog does not have the genetic ability to produce dark hair, which means no black, no brown. It's either gonna be cream, champagne, or red if I have two lowercase e's here. Isn't that cool? So it's kinda cool. Yeah. This talks about patterning. So you can see, most likely to have a solid coat, that's because I have this KB. Now, if I have KY or there's other ones here, that's gonna talk about sable or phantom patterning that's in there. This talks about the intensity of red. So when this is two lowercase e's, it's gonna default to no color. 
So if this says dilute red pigment, that means I've probably got a cream dog. Yeah. If it says intense red pigment, that means I've got a really deep red dog. These yeah. guys carry for an intermediate red pigment. Now what's cool there is if we breed him back to a red dog, could we get a red Merle? Absolutely. We can get a red Merle out of him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, so very, very good. You see, that's why it's so much fun, and it's scientific and creative. That's, that just appeals to that side of me. Well, and a lot of times people ask, hey, is the color going to stick or is it going to fade? And that's what this gene talks and about. And we can tell y'all that now. Okay. So you can see dark areas of hair and skin, not light. And so two capital Ds mean no dilute. A one lowercase D means it carries one dilute gene. So, two lowercases. So my chocolate Merle is not going to dilute when he's older like Correct. some of them because we have a couple of dogs that have been in our program that they started out and you might have seen them like a Merle, but then they ended up this cream color with just a little tip. Yep. They'll them. fade. They end up fading. And so that's what we're looking for here to watch out for that fade gene. So it's kind of pretty cool, the stuff you can see. And then this turns off, you know, black versus brown. This is party versus not. And this is the one with Merle. Now, one of the important things when you're breeding Merles, and I know a question a lot of times we get when we're talking about Merle puppies is, hey, Merle has that increased risk of deafness and blindness. It does with a double Merle. But because we do DNA testing, it has one Merle allele. That means we will, it, it only has one gene. It's not a double Merle. There's not two there. And we will never breed a Merle to a Merle, which means there's no chance of getting two Merle genes or a double Merle. And as breeders, we have to know that so that we don't breed something that's going to present a problem for our puppy. Mm -hmm. So this is so interesting. And this is behind the scenes, the scientific side of what Carol and I sit and discuss when it is time to breed a puppy. You know, we breed with purpose. And mm -hmm. so, you know, now let's say everything's wonderful, everything comes back, but one of these puppies' hips look like they have some laxity, so, mm -hmm. you know, that they're going to have a little looseness and elbows mm -hmm. or the joints. So, we have another procedure. We can we're, for our breeding program, we're keeping great companions, but they also need to have the best genetics possible, mm -hmm. which means. Something that would be a great companion and is never going to have a health issue just mm -hmm. isn't at that high enough standard to make it into our breeding program. Mm -hmm. This little girl actually just last week had her hips test done. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we evaluate and do spay and neuters at around 16, Which she 17. is about their age now. She's older. This is just the last picture mm -hmm. we pulled up. Oh, yes. And so we do that screening at that age because there's the option to do a procedure called a JPS. JPS is a procedure where you can fuse the growth plates within the pelvis that prevents a dog from showing the symptoms of hip dysplasia if it were to develop in the future. Whether you spay or neuter early or whether you spay or neuter later, hip dysplasia is still a great risk for any large breed dog. Mm -hmm. So by doing screenings at a younger age, we can recognize dogs that might be at a slightly higher risk, do a JPS, we actually very much recommend it for any dog that's not going to be in our breeding program. Mm -hmm. So for her, she had her hip screening done. Hips are okay. They're just not what we want for breeding. So she was spayed. She had her JPS. And next week, she'll be made available to the people on our wait list. Yeah, and she's really gorgeous because she was a breeder's pick. She was our puppy that we pulled for our program. But guess what? If she doesn't pass, she doesn't pass. We're not going to bring a puppy that does not carry exactly what it needs to reproduce. We're not mm -hmm. going to do that. I mean, we give a health warranty on our puppies. We stand behind them, but we don't want to set ourselves up or our puppies or our families for any type of, you know, issues in the future. For sure. You know, and the, she did all the same things they did. She came here when she was younger to work on training so we could evaluate that temperament, evaluate mm -hmm. that personality. So she's had training. She's doing great. Her DNA tests all came back fantastic. Everything on her is great. Her hips just are not what we would want to breed in our program. Nothing wrong with them. It's just not that upper yeah. 15 to 20 percent. And that's, that's what we need. She didn't hit the mark. So now you said they're going to be big. How do you know approximately what their weight's going to be? So well, we always do, we, we kind of can guesstimate based on the parents, but what's mm -hmm. kind of cool now is with our DNA testing, it actually will give you a predict, predicted adult weight. And actually, let me bounce back and go to his profile. Um, let's go to this. So on this particular puppy, let me get to his main page. Okay. Well, it bounced me around. Let's go back again. Sorry, guys. 
So, why is it doing that? That's not what my screen has. Okay, well, well let's do this instead. Here you go. That's what my screen has. So on here, we can see it's got a predicted adult weight based on his genetics of 73 pounds. So what they're doing here is when we look at this traits key and we scroll all the way down, it's going to give you these size traits where it's going to say body size larger, body size larger. There's all of these different genetic markers that they're looking at for growth. Well, he is larger on all of them. So 73 pounds is his big, predicted adult weight. Big. Big, big boy. All right. So, guys, I know this has been a lot to take in today, and we are going to wind it up, but I want you to take one last look at these available puppies, these gorgeous, these puppies. One, one of them available. That was his DNA. That yes. was his DNA. All right. Grab him, Charles. And so what I want you to see is that one of these beautiful boys will be available probably within a week, right? Uh, it's going to be probably about two weeks. Two weeks. Because it's 17 weeks when we do the screen. Okay, so what we're doing today is we're going to let you know that if you are happy with either one of these boys, I love them both just like I do. I love them both. I'm going to keep one, and you can have one. Okay, somebody, one of you can get one. Now, if you are interested, submit your application for the available Viola boy. Or if you're already on the wait list, if you're already on that wait list, then you qualify already as a client and you can go ahead and call the office and say, I gotta have one. I don't care which one, because you can't go wrong with either one. I'm fine with whichever one I get, and you can have the other one, all right? So, guys, this was great. We have another, um, topic that we're going to discuss later this week about hermaphrodite puppies and it's really interesting and I want y'all to follow that because it's something that everybody wants to learn about and know about and we're going to educate y'all on that. So you guys have a great day. Give the office a call at 251-960-1311. We're at teddybeargoldendoodles.com. These are large F1B teddy bear English golden doodles. One of them could be yours. Have a great day, guys. Bye.